Over 700 thousands of you have used my free Dragonflight nameplate resources for Mythic Plus and today we are releasing the Dragonflight Season 4 profile and it covers all the 8 dungeons in the rotation. Know that Season 4's profile is backwards compatible with Season 3, so you can go ahead and install it for Season 3 as well. Now let's recap how this playthrough profile massively improves your performance in Mythic Plus. The highlight is the returning of the pink colored caster mobs, showing you exactly which mobs you need to interrupt in the new dungeons. Thick orange cast bars represent very important interrupts that you must interrupt, while the thinner yellow bars represent less urgent cast and abilities that are just good to interrupt. For a detailed explanation of why certain spells are more important to interrupt than others, refer to the 8 masterclass video guides for all the season 4 dungeons. You can find them on the homepage of this YouTube channel. My Plater profile also tracks dangerous frontal abilities both visually and by voice alerts. Visually, all mobs that do dangerous frontals are marked in light blue as they cast frontals and orange-red cast bar with yellow arrows will flash, signaling the need to move away. Additionally, there will be a voice announcer saying front as a warning, which you'll hear as mobs use their frontal. I will explain how to install the necessary audio packs later in this video. Everything is timestamped. The Plater profile also informs you of any dangerous, non-interruptible cast that requires crowd control abilities to stop. These non-interruptible casts are colored in purple and they come with a voice announcer that says CC, which stands for crowd control, reminding you that you need to use your crowd control abilities to stop the cast. My Plater profile also makes managing aggro really easy. For tanks, blue indicates mobs you have firm aggro on, while red shows mobs you have lost aggro for suggesting you need to quickly taunt the red mobs before they one-shot your party members. Now don't worry if you are a non-tang and if you dislike these colors or wish to change them, I will explain how to do so later in this video. Now this profile also comes with a highly requested optional mod, specifically a visual indicator on the cast bars that tells you whether you can interrupt an ability or not, depending on whether your interrupt is on cooldown or not. Let me demonstrate. Now firstly, notice that my interrupt as a brewmaster as circled by my cursor here is available. I can actually use them. I want you to notice what happens when the mana fiends and the scepter starts casting abilities. So have a look over here. You will notice that as the scepter starts casting the mystic blast ability, you will notice that the cast bar has a border that is colored green. That is a visual indicator that tells you that your interrupt is available for you and you are good to go ahead and interrupt the mob. So see what happens here. I interrupt it and you can see that my cooldown on my interrupt now goes on 14 seconds. Now notice what happens when the mob starts casting other abilities. So in this frame here, you can see that there's still 6 seconds left on my interrupt. And when the Mana Fiend starts casting Surge, there's no longer a green border that outlines the cast bar. So this would basically indicate to you that you do not have an interrupt available at this point in time. Now, in this frame, you can see that my interrupt has come back off cooldown. It's ready to be used. Now see what happens when a caster mob casts the next ability. You can see that the green border is back, basically signaling to you that you can go ahead and interrupt. And so visually now, you no longer need to track your interrupt cooldown separately. Now by default, I have this mod turned off because I prefer to track my interrupt cooldowns manually. But if you like what you see and you want to turn this optional interrupt mod on, it's really simple. I have a timestamp section coming up shortly, which teaches you how to install this optional interrupt mod. Now, all the above features makes it immensely easier for you to raise your Mythic Plus score and is super easy to install in two easy steps. So let me just cover how to install the nameplates from scratch, as well as some FAQs on color customizations, audio, scripts, and mods. Now for this demo, I will assume you are a new viewer and you are unfamiliar with add-ons. So let's swap to in-game. If you do not have Plater installed, your nameplates will look something like that by default. Maybe it will vary in terms of size and maybe the font. Now step one, if you desire the audio cues I featured in this video, then continue with this step. If you don't need any audio signals in your Plater profile, skip directly to step two in the timestamp. All the visual signals of my Plater profile will work without audio. If you want audio signals like the announcer saying front, or CC. Download two add-ons, Shared Media and Shared Media Courses. Don't worry if you're unsure where to find them, click the install link in the description for guidance and links to these two add-ons. The first add-on enables audio clip imports into WoW, and the second provides helpful audio clips including the front and CC 
used in my Plata profile. After you install both add-ons, you are done with step one. All right, step two, now to install the Plata profile. Follow the description link, download the Plata nameplate add-on via the external link if it's not already installed. So if you've installed Plata add-on for the first time and you boot into your game, the nameplates will look something like that, nothing like what you see in this video. What you need to do now is to type slash Plata, click on profiles, and then click on import profile, and it will prompt you to paste an import string here. Now tab out, go to the link for the install page that is linked in the description below, open up the import string and simply copy by control C, and then you tap back into the game and press control V to paste. And it should prompt you something like import data verified, and it asks you at the bottom, what should this new profile name be? You can name it anything you want. Click OK, and Plata will basically start processing and reload your WoW. Now, after you reload, you will notice that the Plata nameplates now look exactly as what they should be, which basically marks the end of the installation. Now, moving on to install the optional interrupt mod that I covered earlier. I'm currently in-game and after you've installed my Plata profile, and don't you worry, the second half of this video guides you through everything to install my profile. Now let's assume you have done that, type slash Plata. Now I want you to click on modding and you see this icon here, click on this to say import mod and it will prompt you for a string. Now in the installation page for my Plata profile in the description, you'll find an external link for the import string specific to this interrupt mod. Open up the text string, copy the text, Tap back into the game, press Ctrl V to paste and click OK. You'll see now to the left here, they have imported this new mod called the Interrupt CD Indicator. You have successfully installed the Interrupt mod for my Plata profile. Again, a reminder, this is turned off by default. I do not have it by default. It's an option for some of you who requested specifically for this feature. That's all for installation. Let's move on to FAQs. Some people say they don't like how I colored the mobs. Say, the casters are currently in pink and you don't like pink. You can type slash Plata in any dungeon, click on NPC color and names, and you'll see this drop down. You can see that I colored them pink, but you can select any types of colors you want for your custom mobs or the mobs that basically cast a frontal. Next question, some people say, I don't like how you colored the different types of mobs when you have aggro and you don't have aggro. How do I customize those colors? That is found under the tab called Colors and Threat. And you can see here, color when playing a tank, when you have aggro, I currently have it as blue. And when you have no aggro, it's currently red. So you can customize these to any colors you want. It's entirely up to you. Next question. I don't like your color schemes and profiles for your cast bars. How do I change them manually? Real simple. Slash Plater again. Click on cast colors and names. And you can see all these abilities that I've already customized for you folks. You can search for a specific ability you want. Let's say the frontal in the Everbloom dungeon, Colossal Blow. Currently, I have the frontal set as orange red. You can just change it to any colors you want here. You can even remove the sound by clicking on this drop down and clicking on no audio, or you can set it to any other sound cues that you want. All right, next question. What if you have already customized my nameplate profiles from previous season to have your own look, your own fonts, etc., and you want to keep that, and you only want to import the colors that I have for my NPCs? It's actually really simple. You first import my Plata profile as I covered in this video. You go to the NPC color and names tab and you click export. Copy this entire string that you see on screen. These are basically data that is related to the colors I've assigned to NPCs this season. Copy this entire thing, switch to your own Plata profile, then under the same NPC colors and names tab, hit import and just paste what you copied and simply press OK and you would have imported all the NPC colors and names I've assigned. Next question, what if you also want to do the same now, except this time around you want to import all the data I've assigned for cast colors and names. So in this case, same process. Import my Plata profile, make sure it's the active profile, then go to cast colors and names. You click on share sounds or share colors, depending on what you want to export from my profile. Let's say you want to export only the colors of each cast that I've assigned. You click on colors and this string basically appears. Copy the string, swap back to your profile under the profiles tab, and then go back to the colors and names tab, click on import colors and paste the string, then hit OK, and you would have imported my cast colors. Now, if you want to import sounds, same process, share sounds, and then later on in your own profile, go to import sounds and paste the string. Hit OK, and that way you keep your own look, your own customization, but you would have imported my NPC colors, my cast colors, as well as the voice alerts I've assigned to certain cast. All right, next question. What if there's certain abilities that you want to manually add to the must interrupt list of spells that you need to interrupt to get those 
fake orange bars, how do you assign that manually? Or let's say, how do you assign your own spells to have these frontal animations with the yellow arrow? How do you do that? It's actually really simple. The list of must interrupt abilities and all the frontal abilities that I've made special animations for like the big, thick orange bars or those yellow arrows on frontal, that is controlled under the scripting tab. Specifically, you're looking for the script that is called quasi frontals and quasi must interrupt. Like the name suggests, it's very self-explanatory. So you go to this must interrupt row over here, you click on this and you will see this list of triggers and they correspond to all the must interrupt abilities that gives it that thick orange cast bar that signals to you in this video I've demonstrated that you must interrupt that ability. All you need to do is just simply add the spell name here, just type the spell name. So a dummy spell name is like spell name, right? And then just click add and you add it there. Alternatively, just add the spell ID and you can get the spell ID via wow hit. You can also get it via MDT just to demonstrate to you. Type MDT, click on any mob, let's say this mob, right click on the mob and you can basically click on this, set up this spell on plater. You'll see the plater pop up here and you'll see spell ID here, right? Just copy the spell ID and then under the respective scripts for scripting under must interrupt or frontals, you can add the trigger specifically here, the spell ID. It's as simple as that. Now, if you want to remove certain spells that you don't think are must interrupts, you can just simply hit the cross over here and it will remove the spell from the list. Same thing for frontals, it works exactly the same way. Just enter the spell ID that you want to add these yellow arrow animations to, to kind of signal to you that those are frontals. All right, next question. A lot of people actually ask, how do I make it more obvious that let's say I select this defender over here, that this is my current selected target. Well, in this case, you can see this glowy blue kind of effect over here. And if I swap targets here, you can see it on the other apparatus here. But to make it even more obvious, you can also do something like add in a target bracket indicator under the targets tab. So in this case, I can add arrows, for instance, I can add arrow thin and you can see, oh, it has this arrow over here. It could even add double arrows like that to make it way more obvious. But I generally keep it on none, but I wanted to quickly answer that question. All right, next question is, why is my friendly nameplate displayed in the instance different from those that is being displayed in the cities and the open world? And why is it that my friendly faction nameplates and opposite faction nameplates, they look different in the city? Very simple. Number one, Blizzard is very finicky when it comes to friendly nameplates display within the instance versus outside the instance. I have a blue post on screen that they made a long time ago about friendly nameplates. You can read this. 99% about your questions regarding friendly nameplates goes back to this. Restrictions that they place on friendly nameplates within the dungeon. That is why you don't get to see friendly nameplates sometimes for friendly ads that you see that you need to heal in dungeons or raids. That's the reason why. Also, as it pertains to friendly nameplates of people within your same faction, looking different from those names of people from the opposite faction within the same city. The reason why this is so is because the friendly nameplate setting over here in this tab, friendly player, this applies to the friendly faction within the city, but it doesn't apply to the enemy faction. And that's why there's no way to standardize the look of the two factions in the city without sacrificing the ability to see friendly nameplates easily in M+, like who is standing where and what's the name of the person. Now, if none of these made sense to you, don't worry about it. It's a very niche question I keep getting. You can ignore this. Another frequently asked question I get when Afflicted Week comes around is, hey, how do I see the Afflicted mobs way easier in terms of their nameplates? Well, I have a video dedicated to that. Please watch the video in the middle of the screen. Link to that video in the description below as well. Next question, I just came back to World of Warcraft. I just installed your profiles. I don't see your NPC colors and name showing up here. I don't see any of the class colors here. What's going on? So it's actually located in this very tiny disclaimer on Plater, which I will zoom in for you over here. So for Plater, raid and dungeon NPCs are added into the list after you see them for the first time. This is a disclaimer that also exists on the NPC colors and names tab. It just says the same thing. Essentially, Plater saves resources by only adding NPC data and cask data into the add-on after you see them for the first time in the dungeon. But as long as you import my profile, don't worry, they're all covered in the profile already. You just don't see them because Plater hasn't registered the NPCs and the cast. The moment you see them for the first time, the data will basically start showing. That's the gist of it. Next question, what new features or improvements you've added for Season 4? Well, in Season 4, this profile is now fully compatible with PvP. In all previous versions of my Plater nameplate profile, under the modding tab, you have this thing called Force Threat Color. This mod ensures that Threat and Aggro is properly represented on nameplates, regardless of what colors you assign them for their nameplates as NPCs. 
Long story short, it's what's needed to make the playthrough profile work. However, the problem was if you played PvP like Battlegrounds or Arena, all the other opposing players are always in red because technically you do not have aggro on them, right? Because they are controlled by humans. So one of the big things I've done for season four is under this constructor kind of string, and this looks like mumbo jumbo and programming to you, you don't have to understand. But essentially I've disabled the force threat color mod whenever you're in PvP. So you can see use this beta profile, go into a battleground or an arena, and opposing players will now start showing class colors properly instead of always being red in color. So that's one of the biggest changes and improvements. If all of these FAQs is not enough to address your questions, don't worry. I have a Plata Masterclass video guide on this channel that you see in the middle of the screen that covers every single setting within Plata, every single tab. It's close to two hours long, so bring a cup of coffee, but by the end of it, you will be a Plata expert. Link to that video also in the description. And if you thought that was everything I'm bringing to you, there's also a cheat sheet that I included with this video that you see on screen here. It's basically a Google cheat sheet by Dungeon, every single NPC, every single ability that is either a must interrupt, a frontal, or something that you need to stop with crowd control, and it explains to you what that ability does. So what happens if you don't interrupt? What happens if you don't CC? Link to that also in the description. So you can have that on a side monitor when you're doing Mythic Plus for the first time in those eight dungeons, and you can easily reference what those abilities do. So you can explain to your teammates as well. Every season of Mythic Plus, this nameplate profile only gets better because I incorporate the most requested features from the community in Discord. So if you'd like to inform me of any bugs, suggestions, feedback, missing abilities, you can do so via the Quasi UI Community Discord. The link is in the description description, I make it a point to respond within 36 hours. Now, if you found my profile helpful for Mythic Plus and you'd like to keep this profile free for the WoW Mythic Plus community, you can support me via Patreon. Link is in the description. And speaking about Patreons, a shout out to all my Patreon subscribers you see on screen. These are the real MVPs who are keeping this beta profile updated and free for everyone. I'm grateful for your support. If you're looking to get prepared for the brand new Season 4 on Dragonflight for Mythic Plus, all the masterclass guides, tips, and tricks for all the eight dungeons to make you a pro this season, they are all located in the playlist in the middle of the screen. Make sure to check that out. Subscribe if you'd like to see more Mythic Plus videos. See you in the next one.